Yeah, sorry. If you notice on the wheat grinder, there's a pulley. This is what, this yep. what I'm trying to get at. A so if you, go, if you go to YouTube, there's actually a guy that rigs a bicycle wheel with a pulley on that and sits on there and you can pedal the bike and grind. We have one at our house. Once. You can just fly with wheat on it. Oh, so. get your exercise. Yeah. And this, this company, they sell a bike kit specifically for it that's made to hook up to a bicycle and an exercise stand. And you just hook it up and pedal away and you can set your kids on there and say, you're not eating unless you pedal. <laughs> <laughs> we need some flowers. <laughs> It's a it's a little gear motor. It plugs it, you you take this thing off, and the gear motor hooks directly up to it, and you just plug it in, and you can set it going all day long and grind as much flour or grain or whatever as you want. Um, so they, 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 all these things cost money, but they are options available, and you can make your own um, if you have a motor and a pulley, and hook the motor up to the pulley and whammo, you, you've got your own automated system. You don't have to buy their system if you've got a little know how. If you know what you're doing. Okay. I would say this here, that's an expensive one, but if you get the little, you know, I mean, I've got two of the little teeny cheap. They're, they're not going to last long. I mean, if, if you start grinding a lot of wheat, they're going to wear out. Yeah, this one here's the general generation. This is not going to break down. The small ones are very portable. It's probably 35 pounds or something. What is the name of that brand? It's called Rainmaker. Okay. Um, so that's that's the that's the grinder. Um, let's see here. So talk about our spices. Oh, I want to say on the spice. Exactly, but um, I use essential oils a lot because, like ginger, I'm always making different soups and things with ginger, and I do not want to deal with preparing ginger, and it lasts forever. So I haven't done this yet, but I have it on my list of like the ones that we use for cooking as spices to get them in essential oils because you can just drop. So. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I make my my stuff pretty gingery, so I'll do a few drops. But like the other, there's a few others that you can use. Like there's oregano, that rosemary. I don't know. So there's options too for spices that are also really easy on prep and storing. Okay, cool. Is you can buy little containers, and I get them off of Amazon, of ginger. They're like little teeny glass bottles, and you, they're pretty cheap. They don't cost a ton, because you order like a four or six pack, and it's like 12 bucks or something. And, and I just put them in my, I put them in my pantry, and then I, when I open one, I put it in the fridge. And if I need ginger, I scoop a little out. I also do the same thing with the minced garlic from like Costco and Sam's Club. And I don't, I don't ever buy fresh, ginger, fresh garlic, because it's so much easier just to scoop a little out. And that, I have a bunch of those in my pantry, in my cold storage downstairs. So in an emergency, I've got all the garlic I want. So I don't need to worry about it. Um, as, also, onion. I buy the dried onion, the dehydrated onion from the store. Not that, I don't, I don't, I don't barely ever buy fresh onion. I buy it for a few things, but mostly when I, when I make the soup, I just take it and I just sprinkle it in. And I don't have to worry about chopping the onions up and whatever. It takes two seconds instead of five minutes you know, to get the onions ready, right? He just doesn't like to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so there's there's little little tri tricks and techniques that you can do that make make it a lot easier, and that you can put on your cold storage shelves. So in an emergency, you've got all those delicious things to make. Okay, but you know, on the onions, freeze dried onions are much better than the dried onions. That's probably true. They are because they hydrate right in there, just like they're fresh. Because you can tell when you're cooking with fresh onions versus dehydrated. You can tell. Yeah, the dehydrated ones are a little crunchy. Uh huh. But the fresh, the freeze dried ones hydrate just the same. That's a good idea. And they have the, they have choppers. We have one that it, it has like a little grid inside and they have different attachments you can put in there. So you basically cut your onion or, or whatever you're cutting into quarters and then you just put it in there and close it and it just instantly dices it into little pieces. So if you're going to bulk make freeze dried or something like that, uh, that'd be a really handy way to, to make a bunch of it. Okay. Um, seeds already. How do you store seeds? That's what I was what I do now, okay, seeds for a garden, I get a seed, it's called a seed bowl. Um, it's a little package or a envelope of seeds and they have maybe like, I don't know, 30 or 40 different kinds of plants, seeds in there. And they, each packet has a bunch of seeds. So you could, you could grow a whole farm on one of these things. And they're a little pricey, they're like 40 bucks or something, but they last seven years. And I just put one of them in my cold storage. And when it expires, I take it out, plant my garden with it and buy another one and put it on the shelf. It's good for another seven years. Um, our garden this year, 
we planted from the one that expired. And yeah, not all the seeds germinated, but I'd say about 75% of the seeds germinated. It was pretty good for being so old. Um, in an emergency, that's more than enough because we had so many seeds left over we didn't use just because each packet has so many seeds, there's no way you can use them all. Um, okay, so one, one thing is probably enough to do in all these neighbors. <laughs> You just, just get about. that off our Amazon. Just search on Amazon. Whatever one has 10,000 reviews and five stars, that's the one to get. <laughs> and make sure it's... Remember, right? If it says like one year shelf life, I'd try for a different one. Um, okay. Uh, now, true, leaf, yeah. true Leaf Market, I get emails from them all the time. And they have the storage seeds. They have the sprouting seeds. They have all kinds of that stuff. They're just up in Who's that? Water. True Leaf Market, that's what it's called. True Leaf Market. It used to be, oh, I can't think of what it was before. I bought a lot of seeds from pounds of corn seeds and stuff like that, too. So it's a lot cheaper than buying the little packets, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what uh, what I do for sprouting... It used to be Mountain Valley seed, that's what it was. For sprouting, I buy on Amazon in bulk. So I'll go to Amazon and say, okay, I want one pound or two pounds of alfalfa seeds or whatever, and or or uh, or uh, uh, broccoli seeds or whatever, right? And you, you get those seeds, and they're just in a big bag, and you just put a few tablespoons in one of these things, mix them with water, and you can sprout those. And in emergency, you could also plant those if you really needed to, right? I can't remember, if, I actually don't quote me that, I don't remember if alfalfa, I seem to remember alfalfa being one of the ones I got, but I think it was one of the ones you sprout. Um, but there's the Google, you know, there's a lot of seeds you can sprout. Um, so that's what I do for sprouting seeds. I don't use my garden seeds. The garden seeds, you also usually have like herbicides and things, so you wouldn't want to sprout those. Don't, don't eat them. Okay, just plant them. Um, cooking is becoming a lost art. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to cook. Um, they've been trying for years maybe, and they're still failing, but you know, keep trying, okay? <laughs> keep trying, keep trying, okay? It's really, if you get the right recipes, that's the, I, I think that the real trick to cooking good is the right recipe. If you have the right recipe, the food will turn out really good. Even if you botch it a little bit, it'll still be delicious, okay? Um, you can only burn water so much, right? Um, so it's, the five basics, the tacos, the spaghetti, <laughs> the, you know, rotate Chinese, the yeah, hamburgers, <laughs> the candy, candy canes, candy There's corn so syrup, many. and then intermittently <laughs> going to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> you need a recipe book. So I, I have a recipe book I put together, and I'll, sh if I can get the uh, what we do, for example, for taco seasoning, you know, you, they have those little taco seasoning packets in the bulk taco seasoning. Don't buy that. That's okay? what I do. <laughs> Don't buy that. You can buy it. Well, you can buy that. But in the recipe book I'll share with you guys, we have a homemade taco seasoning. What I do is I make, I, I take those same containers that the, the seasonings come in, and I make enough to fill one of those up. And I use that like the store-bought taco seasoning, but it honestly tastes three times better. Right? Yeah, it's a lot better. <laughs> and you put it on your, you, you, you just brown ground beef and sprinkle it on and... Delicious tacos, best tacos. We do the same thing for like pizza sauces or whatever. We just make a 50 times batch of whatever um, seasonings we need. And then we have to say exactly, okay, use two tablespoons of this to equal. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> same time. We just mix up the seasonings one time and then you can use it for a long time. So that, then you can add your tomato sauce, your tomato juice, your tomatoes, whatever. And you have this, and, and you don't have to store that already made. You just store them canned, you dump them out, or freeze dried, whatever, you dump, pour a little seasoning on, and voila, fresh pasta fazula, or whatever it is you're making, right? And, and it lasts forever, okay? So see, the, remember those seasonings, those aren't gonna go bad on you. So 30 years down the road, when you actually need it, you just take your fresh tomatoes that you can and sprinkle it on, and, ah, whatever you want to make. Um, practice trying out different herbs and different recipes. Salt's your friend, okay, don't forget salt. If something doesn't, I, I'm a firm believer in this, if something doesn't taste good, you didn't add enough salt, okay? Add more salt, it'll taste delicious, okay? So. Uh, you sound like my mother. Put your two basic salt and cayenne. To make it hot enough, you can't taste it anyway. Chili powder. Chili powder Now, I also believe that the right salt makes a big difference. If you sprinkle it all over your soup your soup's gonna taste good but not, not as good okay i like something called real salt it's more expensive but for how much you use it's not that expensive 
Can we buy? They sell it in big twenty-five pound bags. You can That's buy. That's the Redmond. Yeah, the Redmond. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it has minerals in it, and it doesn't have iodine in it. You shouldn't be. I don't think you should be eating that, anyways. Um, it doesn't have iodine in it. It has the minerals in it, and it just has a really good flavor. Like if if you haven't done the comparison, put a little sp sprinkle of uh, iodized salt on your tongue, and then put a little sprinkle of real salt, and you'll be converted. You'll be like, wow, that's a big difference. Just just taste testing on your tongue. Because the iodized one like, is almost like a, like a metal battery in your tongue. You're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't taste good. Um, okay, so so salt it, and it'll be really good. Try, try making it sometime. Try making a soup with a bunch of good seasonings and herbs in it without any salt, and taste it before you salt it, and it just tastes bland. There's no flavor. Like You can barely taste the herbs in it, and you're just like, this, this isn't very appetizing. Put enough salt in it, and it's magically been... So don't 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 underestimate that. Um, and again, <laughs> practice using it. Don't don't just say okay. We'll, we'll we'll put this stuff on a shelf. We'll put the cookbook on the shelf. We're good to go when there's an emergency. No, like take this stuff and actually start using it. Make stuff at home. Like make make dinners for your families and for yourselves. Like try stuff out. Like say okay, this week we're gonna try these things. Most of these things, you can store all these all these things and should have all these seasonings and herbs and chicken bouillon cubes and whatever on your shelves. So it's not like you have to go to the store and say, oh, okay, well, how do I get, you know, this, this special Chinese mushroom or whatever, you know, you don't have to have all that stuff. Just things that are already in your food storage or, or should be in your food storage, okay? So it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, okay. Ooh, yeah. Yes, what if I like that mushroom? <laughs> okay, then let me... Don't do those two, that's one. Here's the famous Iyer <laughs> recipes. Okay, now here's a few other things. Before I get into the re actual recipes, um, I wanted to look at, okay, uh, solar oven, okay? These, these, these documents I have, they, t they tell you how to make a solar oven out of cardboard and tin foil or out of a windshield reflector for your car, like a, one of those reflective ones, okay? You basically just make a funnel out of it. You put a, a jar in a plastic bag with your food in it, and you set it at the bottom of the funnel and aim it at the sun, and hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half later, there's fresh cooked bread or fresh cooked soup, whatever it is. And it's very, it works very well. This was developed at BYU by a professor there because um, he was trying to figure out, you know, there has to be a better way for people to cook and pasteurize water and whatever in third world countries. And this is what he came up with, uh, him and his students. Um, so this, this goes through, let's see here. This goes through and kind of, oops. How to construct it. Um, how to, how to put the bag together, how to, how to, how to actually use it, tests that they did with it, um, things that they cooked with it, um, scientific stuff, if you really want to go into that, I don't, I don't. Um, okay, and then also a, a way to test for pasteurization, um, a way to, to purify water with a solar puddle. Basically, you bury your water in a puddle with plastic and then it, it purifies it in a matter of, you know, half a day. Um, is I think like another solar oven. So, so anyways, those are, this is a handy resource I'll, I'll share. And this is another one. This is a oven, an actual oven. Um, it uses charcoal briquettes. And four charcoal briquettes is enough to like cook a loaf of bread. Um, it's very efficient because it's completely surrounded by tin foil. And so it's reflecting all that heat back inside. And so just those four briquettes. And he, he talked about it specifically, like how many he adds to get certain temperatures. And adding, adding each additional, Days another 35 or 40 degrees and so you just place how many you need for whatever temperature you're trying to cook something okay um, so that's that's something I'll share as well and this is the windshield shade I was telling you about okay okay and This is the higher top secret recipe. Not so top secret anymore. Thanks, Dodo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's these are the recipes that we use on a, on a, on a weekly basis. Like we're we're always making all these recipes we've made, and we're constantly making it. And they're uh, <laughs> or you could actually make it. Like, <laughs> so are you gonna put this on our yeah, website? Yeah, I'll put this is. I think this is already on the word website.
Well, how do we know if sauce one, sauce two, or sauce three is the good one? <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> 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 My favorite is Korean barbecue teriyaki sauce. That one I think is delicious. And so what I do is I just boil it all together. And this has this has large chunky things like ginger or ginger, garlic, and uh, crushed red peppers in it. So what I do is I take, strain it out, and and then I thicken it with corn. After I do that, I thicken it with cornstarch, and it makes it. So it, it sticks to the rice grains a lot better, so it doesn't just fall through the bottom of your plate. It actually coats your rice. Mm -hmm. um, and then we take, you know, those big bottles that J Dog's sauce comes in, those squeeze bottles. We just put it in one of those and put it, keep it in the fridge. And any, and if we want to cook milk, we throw rice on, squirt it on their rice, and instant delicious dinner. And the kids are like begging for, you know, teriyaki sauce on their rice, and and uh, it, it's really good. Try it out. Um, but that's our favorite. I've included the other three in case you wanted to try some other ones. This this one has a little bit of kick, but not much. My, my kids don't like really spicy stuff, and they all like it. Okay. Okay, some fried rice recipes. Fried rice is pretty easy. Rice lasts a long time in your food storage, and um, you can freeze dry or dehydrate or buy um, the ingredients to make these. You know, onions, um, uh, spring onions, um, you know, peas and carrots, you know, whatever you want, whatever you like to put in your in your stuff, you can put that in your food storage and you can throw this together with your rice because rice is, rice is going to honestly probably be a big part of good, very varied ways to eat it so you don't get sick of it. Um, and we have rice at least once a week and, and our kids aren't sick of it. They all love rice. Um, that's how many good ways there are to make rice. Do you Rice or just white rice? We like jasmine rice personally. Mm -hmm. I love jasmine rice. I think it has a really good flavor to it. And it, it sticks together. And it can stick together. I mean, it's it's together the bit. one with the flower. Like a, it's like a red cow rose. That's cow rose. I don't know. Okay. The cow rose is the sticky sweet rice. That's a sticky one. Oh, yeah. This is a long grain rice. You like the jasmine. Jasmine, yes. Yeah. I like jasmine has been out of stock in Costco for a while and it's packing. Oh, it's right packing? Now. Well, as of like a week ago. So get, get it so now IPL. because they keep going out of stock. And, they do. And I'm j just just between you, me, and everyone, um, uh, food prices are going higher and higher, and food supply is going lower and lower. So cross the two lines together, and you should get your food storage. Okay, so don't procrastinate. Uh, if you wait too long, you might not get it. Okay. Have you found a place to buy jasmine rice in large quantities? There is a place, um, she knows, like, she can tell you later, but... Uh, yeah, and Asian stores. Asian, Asian stores, stores have it. But then, where is it that you got them? I got mine at Sam's Club. Oh, Sam's, you took them out. There's a place... 25 pounds back. Place they were cheaper than Costco. What was the place in Pleasant Grove you are telling me about, I think, or, or, or that area? There's some place you sent me, I thought. And, oh, are you talking about Sharin's? Yes, that one. She's, uh, Sharin's, um... It's called Alpine Food Storage, and she's up in Alpine. But she has amazing dills. I made him um, stuffed bell peppers, and she had these beautiful stuffed bell peppers for, I mean, anything you can imagine. So, no, but it's Alpine Food Storage. Um, do you have, oh, like, any church resources as far as, like, attend can, canning? Um, just the bags. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the steak has a canner, right? Yes. Yes, the steak has a canner. We, I don't know where, Did but find someone it? has it. Yeah. Because it's been missing. Yeah. Isaac, Isaac, Isaac can smell it. Shepherd. Damn it. Shepherd. Hail. 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 He knows where it's at. Oh, he's, good. he's been using it. He's, it's kind of oh, gone back and forth. That's why he used it. It's, it's, it's been lost. Between him, him and uh, Sister Reynolds Parker and Benjamin Second okay. Ward. Because he called me while we were on our mission in Florida wondering if I knew where it was. <laughs> Reynolds Parker. Anyway, they, they found it. They found it. Okay, good. Now, it, it's worth pointing out the, the church has their, their pre canned food that they sell, right? right? Um, I was looking around. Okay, the, the soup that I made for you guys tonight. It has uh, Great Northern beans in it, um, and the church really they good. actually have the best price that I was able to find on dried Great Northern beans already in number ten metal cans. 
So I actually need to go buy a bunch of those because because that's probably the bean we use the most. It's a really mild bean. Uh, it, it's great for making all sorts of soups and, and things where it doesn't overpower the dish. It, it kind of just blends in with all the spices and seasonings and flavorings, right? Um, so keep, keep note that the church actually does have really good prices on their stuff. So don't, don't be hesitant to buy it from them. They, 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 they're not. Well, right, I, I work yeah. at the Bishop Storehouse and they're right next to us, the Home Story Center. And they just opened here on Tuesdays and uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays. And so you can go there and buy the, the gallon cans of the wheat, oats, and stuff. Just right there in Springville, right behind Desert Industries. Can you use it to make your own? Like if you bring a bag no, in? You no, can't. not anymore. That's for the they canner. don't let you do that anymore, so you'd have to use the wood steak canner. And, and they, they do run out of things like they don't have terrible You'd have to try a different one. They have powdered milk. They have rice and cans. They've got, and they have um, a lot of it is uh, canned. Thirty years on it. So Some there, of it's less. Do you have to yeah. make an appointment, or can you just walk in? You can walk in, but it's best to call. Ahead. They like you to have an appointment, but they're not that busy. So if you just walk in, then you're fine. It's right next to DI in Springville. Mm -hmm. well, the building right behind, behind DI, it. The building back there has got the Bishop Storehouse, and then right next to that is the uh, Home Storage Center. And Family Services is there as well, and the employment, LDS employment. It's all right in there. And then they're only open a short period of time, like. I think 11 to 1 or 11 to 2 on Saturdays. On Saturdays yeah. Yeah. And I think it's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Saturday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. I just put it in two weeks ago on the weekly email. Yeah. Did they change it then? Because it used to be well, I know Thursday. Open Wednesday, because that's. Okay, so we didn't put much attention. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Glad you read my email. I saw it there. I saw it there, but I didn't. She just didn't memorize it. <laughs> okay, now I forgot to go over a few of the things, so we'll go over a few of these things and then we'll come back to kind of sharing some more information there. So so this is a bread maker. There's a lot of different brands. Um, this is a really nice one. Um, they're nice because you can put all your ingredients in. If you don't if you're not if you're not a big baker and you don't know how to bake bread really well, you throw your ingredients in, you can set a delay and say, I want this done by 7 a.m. You wake up in the morning go out to the kitchen, there's fresh steaming hot raisin bread sitting on the counter and you just slice it and eat it and no hassle and it tastes delicious. Um, less work, um, that's one approach you can take. Uh, this is called a thermal cooker. This one, they don't, they don't make any, this is made by a couple up in uh, Saratoga Springs, it's called Saratoga Jack. We were losing money on them um, and so they stopped, but you can still buy them from different brands from other people. They're just a little bit more pricey than, than this one was. Basically how it works is there's this pot inside. You'd st and they, these nice pots, you put your food in here, you boil it on the stove for 10 minutes, you, or five or 10 minutes, something like that. You stick it in here. You can put some extra vegetables or whatever in here. Put the lid on, close it up, come back six, eight hours later, and it's, it's like a slow cooker that doesn't take electricity, okay? Mm -hmm. All it takes is that initial boiling for a few minutes, and then you stick it in and it slow cooks all day long because this is heat inside, and it just continues to keep that temperature really high and cook it all day long. And then you come back and it's ready to eat whenever. So you can do this on the go, you know, if you just, right, you're going on a trip, throw that. You have a hot meal, you know, halfway through your trip, okay? So that, that's a good resource. <laughs> Um, this is a uh, pressure cooker. Uh, it's called the Instant Pot. I don't know if any of you guys have one. This, this is the extra, I don't know if you've noticed, if you do have one, this is a little larger than the one you have maybe. We have a large family. So this is the large version, but basically you throw at the manual, the manual says potatoes, 10 minutes. So you say, all right, so you put it on 10 minutes, you set it to go, it takes five or seven minutes to get up to pressure. Once it gets to pressure, Timer starts going down for 10 minutes. Once it's done, they're cooked all the way through. Uh, in an emergency or in a situation where you don't have much power, uh, these are great power to cook for the same, the, the same amount of stuff because of that pressure 
makes the temperature a lot hotter, so they cook a lot faster than they would otherwise. Um, so it's not, not more energy, it's not more energy and cost that's causing it, it's that pressure. Especially in here in Utah, because we're at high elevation, our temperature for our boiling water is actually a bit lower than people at sea level, so it takes longer to cook things and more energy. This compensates for that quite a bit, because it, it it's a lot faster than even sea level would be, obviously. Um, this is our um, flour mill. You just plug it in and turn on. It's really loud. I don't, I don't want to turn it on in here. Uh, hurt your ears. <laughs> it's really loud, but um, you just turn it on, pour a bunch of wheat in here, and it only takes a couple of minutes, and you've got a big thing of fresh milled flour that you can make whole wheat pancakes, whole wheat waffles, bread, um, you know, biscuits, whatever you want to do with it, okay? And it's really quick and easy. In an emergency, and I don't have power, this is my backup, okay? Now, so it's not an emergency. This is a way to cycle through my food storage and to actually use it and eat a little healthier, right? Okay. So they both have their place. Um, I wouldn't just get one or the other. I'd, I'd, I'd personally have both. But if you had to have one, think of what's going to be more valuable if you actually need it. I know one like that. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a tortilla press. If you make your own tortillas. Um, Where'd you get that? Someone just giving it My friend gave it to me for free. But you can get it on Amazon for like 30 bucks or something like that. Um, you just, you just, now, if you have some, uh, I think it's lime, you, uh, or I think, I think it's lime, um, citric acid or something, I think it's lime, you put, you, you put your corn, your, your, your storage corn, the dry, hard corn, you, you soak it with lime in, uh, I think it's lime, don't quote me on that, look it up on the internet, <laughs> in water overnight, and it kind of starts smelling like corn tortillas. It's kind of weird. Like there's just some chemical reaction that happens. And then you take it and you rinse it all off and then you grind that corn and that, that ground, that flour that you get is masa. If you were just to grind the corn, it would just be cornmeal bread, like cornmeal tortillas. It would not be the same thing. It's, it, it's that process that makes corn tortillas have that special taste. So you can make your, if you just get some, some of that, that uh, lime or whatever it's called, for your food storage, you can make those in an emergency, and then you have your own tortilla press, you can make your own corn tortillas, okay? Though all of my Mexican friends, they just buy the masa um, flour. Yeah, but you can make it in an emergency if you need to. It's red dead tacos, yes. one of the big five. Corn's the best. Corn's the best. Corn's the best. Is that like the masa? Yeah, I like so I'd be really curious to try to make it. Absolutely. All right, so that's all the stuff we brought for equipment, okay? Uh, these, now I, I started with rice recipes because rice is really quick and easy and cheap, and a little bit goes a long way as far as the sauce is on the rice, okay? So butter chicken sauce, this is something that you don't have to add the chicken. This is mostly stuff that you can have in your food storage, diced tomatoes, seasonings. Uh, butter and cream are the only things that you might not have, but you can, you know, uh, instead, and butter, you can use coconut oil, or uh, for example, the uh, cornbread tonight, use, and the uh, soup, usually I make, I use butter for my cornbread. Tonight I kept it strictly food storage. Everything in those two came from my food storage. I, so it's coconut oil, not butter tonight. Coconut oil is good because it lasts five to seven years. Butter does not last five to seven years. Um, so you can put a lot of that in your food storage and it'll last a long time, and it's delicious. Okay, so the butter chicken sauce is really delicious, and if you want to, you can cook chicken in it, and that makes it for some really delicious chicken. Uh, my kids love this. They hear we're making this, they, they, they all start cheering. <laughs> yep. I was just wondering if we have an emergency, can you adopt me? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a board co-op, you know. Now, you know, Neil can eat off the lamb. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the garam masala? Garam masala, that's, that's a, it's an Indian seasoning. You can make it yourself from all the seasonings that are in it. But I just bought a container of it off Amazon. It was like 10 bucks for a big container. That'll last you for years and years and years. Spicy, is it? It's, no, it's not spicy. It's not spicy because I wouldn't eat it. It's just a certain Indian taste. It just, it's just really flavorful, really flavorful. Is that in this soup, honey? Uh, no. no, it's not. Um, it also, though, so you could use it for cooking meats and stuff. And it, it, it's, it's good for variety, really good, really good seasoning. Okay. Uh, teriyaki beef stir fry. Everyone likes that. Okay. Uh, Taiwan meat rice. This is this is something I eat in Taiwan on a mission all the time. Um, you just use it with pork sausage and either um, 
either pork belly or bacon. Bacon works as well. And you know how you know how when you under you don't cook bacon long enough, the fat is really chewy and gross, and you just throw it away. Okay, that's that's the best part about this meal. You put it in there, that that hard fat. You simmer it all day long, six or eight hours, and when it's done, that fat is melting your mouth. You put it in your mouth, and it just like dissolves into your mouth, and it, it is delicious. Um, you put it on top of rice, just a little scoop on top of rice, and it's really really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Taiwan, obviously. Um, is your sorry? Is your yep. flag spice something else that you buy? That's a Chinese spice, and I buy that. I just buy a thing of that. You can buy it at Asian stores or online on Amazon, and they sell it in packets, or you can get a little jar of it. And you don't use a lot, and so um, you can just get a little bit for a few bucks and try it. Um, but that, that also makes spice spice also makes really good meat. Fries and things and fried rice. And what's palm sugar or rock sugar? Did, you don't have to use palm sugar. You can just be sugar. Just sugar. Okay. I have palm sugar, but you don't have to. <laughs> Taiwan tomato it's eggs. It's basically two. stewed tomatoes with with uh, eggs, with scrambled eggs mixed in. But they're Chinese scrambled eggs because the scrambled eggs have um, scallions oh. and sesame oil in them, it's and it's cute. really delicious. My kids, almost all these recipes, my kids cheer whenever we make them. Well, they really just <laughs> like food. They like food. Okay, so this one's really good, and if you have a lot of tomatoes in your garden, this is a great way to use all those tomatoes that you don't know what to do with, okay? Curry chicken is also really delicious. Uh, if you like curry, I love curry. Okay, breakfast. Um, breakfast. I, some of these things aren't food storage, but they do have dried hash browns you can get in the big five-gallon buckets, and, and you can freeze dry them. Um, so this can be a food storage item. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be like a frozen or a fresh thing or fresh potatoes or anything. It can be it can be dried. And Omelets like I said, is Saturday. Omelets is Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you have a garden going, you're gonna want. Sam's to Club sells the stuff. the dried one in about this big, and Costco they did have them on sale. Has in the little boxes and uh, of the Macy's. I don't know if they still do Macy's when they had their food store. Five gallon bucket full of hash browns that you could buy. I don't know if they Church still used to too. Okay, um, and remember, you can take the individual ingredients and freeze dry or dehydrate them or buy them. And then, as long as you have all the individual ingredients, you can throw them together and make whatever you want in this recipe book. Okay. Um, whole wheat waffles. Um, if you if you want to use your whole wheat, uh, this is a pretty good recipe for it. Um, again, milk. Uh, if you use powder is going to help it to rise so don't forget the vinegar even though it's not normal milk even though it's powdered milk it's still going to it's still going to work out mm -hmm. because you have that vinegar in there and you should have vinegar in your food storage don't forget that you'll be sad if you don't have it okay um okay this, i i've had a lot of waffles in my life and these are the best waffles you'll ever have okay okay this the, the plain just waffle recipe not, not whole wheat just just waffle recipe uh, we make it almost every Saturday. Um, it is really, really good. And it's really simple. Really simple recipe, really delicious. Uh, granted, this isn't Belgian waffles. I've never tried Belgian waffles. If you try it, let me know how it turns out or if it runs your waffle iron. But, but this is the, the small, the little small square waffle irons. Uh, whole wheat pancakes. Uh, this is my grandma's, my, my grandma's recipe. And it, it was probably an original pioneer recipe. These are really good pancakes, really good whole wheat pancakes. There's white pancakes if you don't like wheat. Um, Abel skewers. These are a delicious um, Danish know, Dutch, D Danish Danish uh, pancakes. They're they're bowl pancakes, and you basically dip them in butter and sugar. And and we have it every year for Christmas. It's a tradition. But, um, but you have to have the Abel skewer pan, don't you? Do you do have to have a special pan. Yeah. Uh, you could just make pancakes, I guess. I'm not sure how they turn out, but. Um, is that the Dutch oven thing? It's got a little dip it's in it. It's got lots of dip. I have one of those. Those are able skewers. We'll show you how to use it. Come on over. You pour the... You pour the oh. Okay. Okay, so I'll tell you, it's called a little skewer. You don't wait till Christmas. German pancakes. It's up there on the top. It's not a breakfast. German pancakes are also another uh, foreign thing that's really delicious and easy. Uh, they also call them puff pancakes or panukaku. Um, Dutch babies. Okay. It's basically batter in with you know, pop pan with butter. You pour this batter in and bake it for 20 minutes, and it puffs up the sides. It actually goes up the sides and raises up about this high, 
and it just like sticks out of the pan on the sides and it's really fun to watch but they're delicious uh, our kids love them um, like pickiest eaters that's what they have <laughs> but you also we've found an easy way for if we're pressed for time and we don't like dishes which we don't like dishes um, <laughs> you can just pour it in and cook like a crepe and then flip it and it it's not as good but it's it's still really good and it's really quick and easy and, and the kids love it and it has a lot of eggs in it and so it's a good way to use a lot of eggs okay uh drop biscuits uh these this this particular recipe right here these are the best biscuits just about um for, for, for zero, zero work you just mix everything together and then throw it in the oven it's, you don't have to knead or cut anything out or anything like that. You just mix together, drop onto the pan, and bake it. And it's really good biscuits. And then the sausage gravy goes really well on top of it if you like sausage gravy. You're not picky, is that? I don't know. And then, <laughs> and then we have all our breakfast foods that the kids like to make. So, so cream of wheat. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, West Mountain Grains, I think it is. Or maybe it's Abigail's Oven. One of those two. Well, Abigail's Oven. Uh, they, have, they have big 50 pound sacks of different things. One of them is cream of farina or something like that. Farina. farina. But anyways, um, that's cream of wheat. 50 pound sack is like 20 or 30 bucks. And that thing will last you forever. My kids love it. It's really delicious. And it's a, it's a good, good item to get used to, you know. Delicious. And you can use it in an emergency. Okay. Oatmeal, grits. Uh, grits are just a, a, um, it's a, it's a corn product. I'm sure you guys have probably all had it. it they're really tasty, especially this recipe. Uh, overnight oats is really good because you just mix it up the night before. In the morning, you mix it, throw it in everyone's bowls, put some toppings on top, and you're ready to eat. Uh, you don't have to cook it or anything, and it's really delicious. Okay, overnight cracked wheat mush. You just heat it up on the stove. Put lid on. In the morning, you stir it up, and you got fresh cracked wheat, it, it's, uh, you just heat it up a little bit and it's ready to go. You don't have to cook it for 20 minutes, if, half an hour. If you're not able to crack your wheat, you can just do it with the whole berry and just boil it for five or 10 minutes and then do that. I almost uh, killed my companion and I on our mission. Because nobody told me, just soak it overnight. It would have, but that, I, it, he ate it, you ate it every week. Yep. We ate it growing up and my yeah. kids like it. Uh, a little trick for, for wheat berries is you boil hot water and then turn it off, and that works. But I prefer it, you boil it for about 10 minutes and then turn off the heat and let it sit mm -hmm. overnight. That, that makes the grains open up and pop, or like popcorn kind of. And then when you eat it, 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 it soaks up a lot more of the, uh, I, I, I have a little bit of the juice in there when you scoop it in your bowl. And you put some butter, some salt, a little bit of brown sugar, and some cinnamon, and uh, some cream. And it's really good. Um, wheat mix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, just in case like someone in this room doesn't know what a wheat berry is, can you explain that? I mean, whole wheat. <laughs> not not cracked or anything. Just, just the wheat just the wheat grains. Whole wheat, not cracked or anything. You're right? too young to know about that. <laughs> Before you do anything to it. Um, it's just good to know. know. <laughs> okay, cornmeal mush. Cornmeal is a great storage item. Cornmeal will last a long time in storage. Um, my kids like to make cornmeal mush. Um, it's pretty tasty. Um, so try that as well. We grew up on that too. Okay, uh, homemade maple syrup. This is one of the best syrups you'll ever have. Mm -hmm. Okay, buttermilk yeah. syrup, also one of the best syrups you'll ever have. They're fighting each other right here for number one place. Um, is maple In the fridge. I keep it in the fridge. In the fridge. I, I keep it in the, the fridge. I keep it in the fridge until I find a big chunk of mold in it. On my yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> that was, we always just keep fridge. it in the fridge. That was, it's cool. that was gross. I was telling you. It doesn't yeah. have preservatives. Exactly. Yeah. It's just sugar. Yeah. But that's all we so use. These are, these are a bunch of maple extract. Put those in your food storage and you'll be good to go. And that's going to give you job security. Can you get those in Amazon? Yes, you can get them. Um, we get our, ex our vanilla extract from Mexico. Um, occasionally there's this lady, I don't know if it's the same lady every time, she goes to Mexico and she brings back big boxes full of vanilla extract for, for pretty good prices. I think it's like it's $10 like wholesale co for each like, giant thing, like each like liter oh. bottle. And so we buy like... Yeah. yeah. yeah so we'll, we'll let everyone know like if we ever see a group sell like something like, like that. Big ones for 20 bucks. Uh, we just got a bunch of honey through this thing like that. Mm -hmm. um, they also but, sell yeah, that, that vanilla extract. Down in in the bar. Bar. Yeah. 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 Ye
you can buy it from Mexico. Mexican. Oh, so that's the that, check that out. But it shouldn't stores, cost in the stores. It's like Mexico. twenty bucks for a teeny little mm-hmm. jar. It shouldn't be near that expensive if you get a good deal. So just just so you know, a liter bottle is a good deal for like ten or twenty bucks. It'll something last like that. a long time. But the full yeah, you. Yeah. Tons of that. I have probably like twenty of each, uh, or twenty chicken and twenty beef, because those last forever. Molokatani soup. It's really simple. It uses a lot of things you can grow on your land, and it's it's delicious and filling. Okay, get a lot of curry powder if you want to make this. Uh, this takes a bit of curry powder. Um, chili is really easy if you have a lot of beans in your food storage. You just throw them together with your tomatoes and, and, and meat, and some, all, all those seasonings that you. He's the little thing. <laughs> get the big ones. Get the yeah, big we ones. have <laughs> massive ones, like tons of them. Okay. So I need to get the other thing. Easy white chili. That's what's back there tonight. Is easy white chili. Um, I oh, this is written a little weird, um, but I used to do it with, with just. Is that cumin or cumin? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You messed me up. <laughs> um, okay, so it's sage, rosemary, and thyme with pepper and bay leaves. That's my favorite way of doing it. The alternative way. Okay, that that's what the way I did it tonight, and I think it's really good. Um, so you just throw this all in and make sure you add enough salt. It'll be really good. <laughs> Chicken tortilla soup, really quick and easy. Now, these are all, all these soups, these are really quick. This this soup, from start to finish, making that and the corn. Uh, the cornbread was still cooking. It's because you had minions was, open your cans for you. The kids open the cans. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of cans. Okay. So these are all really quick things. You basically just heat them up and you're ready to eat. Like It doesn't take a lot of work. There's not a lot of preparation. Yeah, 10 cans, and you, you blend four of them, and that makes it kind of a creamy soup, because the, 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 the beans are the creamy base. Mm. Okay, uh, chicken tortilla soup's really good. Barley stew, this is really good in your, in your instant pot. Um, this only, this only t- takes, uh, you know, less than half an hour to cook in your instant pot, um, and then you've got a really good soup. Uh, zucchini chili, this was really um, great use during the summer. Uh, potato soup, this is also really good. Um, this one's a lot more preparation. This is a bit more involved, but it is really good. So try it if you, if you want. Zupa Toscana, I like this one a lot. Um, it's a really good soup. But I'm also trying to push the concept of get used to cooking and get used to your kitchen and spices and putting things together. And then when you have an emergency, you'll be comfortable and you're not going to be pulling your hair out like, what do I do with this? Like, you're going to be like, no problem. Like, I do this all the time. Okay. And you'll eat better. You'll, you'll eat really good food at home. Okay. Cream of celery soup. I haven't tried that one. That's a coworker's recipe. But that's one of the exceptions. Um, okay. Cacarillo. Every single one, they would have. You like cacarillo a lot? Like, uh, for real. I'll go through our favorites. So let's see here. <laughs> it's like they can look through it themselves. I think we need a potluck of food storage. Okay. And everyone makes something and brings the recipe and then we'll go around and get the recipes. That's a good and idea. Try it. Every, everyone needs to have their thing. Because you want to try it and be like, I want that one. Oh, yeah, the taco seasoning. Yeah. Here's your taco seasoning. There's the taco seasoning. He's not going to let you see all, all of it there. So it doesn't make a lot. Because that. Yeah, well, probably. I, so <laughs> we the, this, this a was lot, a giant really batch did. of like one cup of this, you know, half a cup of that, but I reduced it back to the normal amount because I thought, okay, maybe everyone's not going to be wanting to make four cups at a time. Um, <laughs> like so I, this is the original amount. You'll want to multiply it if you want to fill up a seasoning container. Um, ranch powder, we also use a lot, so we can have that in there. Saga things. Um, Mexican beans and rice. This is a good storage item because it uses your dried beans and it uses your dried rice with your seasonings. And my kids, my kids are rave about this one. They love this one. Um, let's see here. Sauteed basil zucchini. This is also an excellent use of your garden zucchini. Really delicious. Zucchini and your seasonings that are on your shelf. Also is a kind of a food storage item. It's a uh, your okay. Your I, I should mention this. Your, your pastas like your macaroni, your your spaghettis, your durum wheat pastas. Properly in your cold storage, they can last you twenty five or thirty years. Okay, so those are a good long term storage item. Um, okay, and and then the, the rest of this is just seasonings and things that are really delicious ones. And that's it. Um, I believe this is on the Wood website. 
Um, you have to double check it. If it's not, let me know. But I'm pretty sure I put it on the Word website. It's at the bottom. There's a link to there to the PDF. Um, any of this stuff that we've gone over? Well, we also do a ton of stuff with sourdough, which didn't include any of that in there. But oh, yes, because sourdough can be multiplied a lot, and it's this great food storage thing. You can dry it, freeze it, um, dehydrate it, or keep it in the fridge, like whatever, and then you can take it out and use it. But we keep it active on the counter all the time, and we can use it for. We make it with biscuits and rolls and tortillas. Everything. Can you tell us a little more about the process? Like, I mean, we probably would have to have it be like a full class. That would be nice. <laughs> but um, Abigail's <laughs> Oven actually offers a free online one, and then you can also get their sourdough start for free. But then I have a huge recipe book that we could also include on there that I've gathered. When we wanted to try something, recipes, and I would try them all and be like, okay, put this one in there because that's my favorite. <laughs> so we did that a lot, and then I made a sourdough, um, sourdough start cookbook just for that of that stuff that we've been doing. Um, but and then it's great for breads. So like for bread, if you um, have a like need to live off your food storage, it's only water, salt, um, and sourdough start and flour, and it tastes great. Like you don't need the sugars you don't need all of that that's what we use as our primary no yeast, yeast yeah really no yeast all it is is flour and water that's all you have to feed it to keep it going and then we make everything else out of that and so you don't need all the extra yeast and things like that but we use a lot of salt doing that you have to feed it every every day so you basically if you keep it on the counter if you keep it in the fridge, the fridge you don't, you don't. But on the counter, you feed it every day, and you, you feed it just water and flour. You just add equal amounts by weight, and then mix it up. And then um, the extra, because if you don't if you don't take any out, you're going to quickly have like 100 gallons of starch. You don't want that. Okay, so you take every day. You're going to remove some of the container. It's already it's already it's already eaten all the gluten. Okay, and it's it's now inactive. Okay, you put it in your fridge, and once you get enough, we make something with it. We make you know like you. You use the discard which is it's not freshly oh, eaten and so you so like if you don't want to rise a lot then you would use that for or but you only would want to feed really good. yeah okay so, or cornbread or just anyways different things i didn't use it with this one but okay so we do a lot, a lot of that lot of too there. okay um <laughs> one question uh -huh. yeah it's kind of you know, sometimes you look at your cans and oh. it's she was talking about my brother-in-law is a chemist and he said that those cans that say expired they can go a long time longer than they say expired well you notice in the can it doesn't say expires it says best buy yeah meaning flavor texture color something might not be ideal when you use it if it's past that date but unless it like tomatoes you want to be a little careful with because tomatoes do go bad a lot quicker but like beans and things like that those last a lot longer than their expiration date says. If you can your own tomatoes, though, I have them go really a lot, lot longer than you the You mean cans. the bottles? Yeah, I use the bottles and I canned them. Um, the farmers, we used to have a lot of tomato farmers, and they just give us buckets of tomatoes, and I would just can them all up, and they would last quite a while. So if you bottle some of your stuff, it will last longer than a can. Other questions? You, you want me to mention about what you can do if you don't have one of these jack things? Uh, uh, yes, that, go ahead. Yeah, you, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, go ahead and show that. So, um, my sister and I did a thing where we made something called a wonder oven. Okay. A wonder oven. Have you ever heard of them before? Okay, this is something you can sew in there. And you either can keep like cold things cold or you can cook in it. And you do the same thing. You boil it for 10 minutes. You can actually cook in, you know, the bags from um, um, cereals. You can actually cook in those. But you have to have it down in water. And um, so you have the water and you put your um, different, um, like we had four different kinds of chicken seasoned and then put the lid and held it down and then boiled it 10 minutes and moved it to the Wonder Oven, which is a little place. I put like a towel in it to keep it nice. 
and it's a styrofoam bag with a hole in it, put it in there and put a lid on it, and then just let it sit and cook just like this. Um, and if you don't, haven't made one of those, um, then you can actually do it in your, in your uh, cooler, in your chili bin. Uh, what's another name for it? That's the New Zealand name for it. Uh, ice rink. And you, can, and you can actually cook in your ice chest. But you put a blanket in there, you put a towel down, and you put the stuff in there in this pot in the water that you've boiled for 10 minutes and then just move it in there, cover it up, latch it down. So if you're traveling somewhere, you know, like you gotta go travel four hours to go camping, when you get there, you can just serve the food out of the ice chest. Also, um, you can look up the word hay boxes and it's what they did during World War II and it's the same concept and they put it in the hay and then they put that down there. So there's something that they've used over time that we kind of have lost the ability to do. So just throwing it out there um, and I'll just throw in on the side, it's cold here. You can save your life if you ever stop, if your car gets stopped in cold, like in the snow, you're stuck in the mountains, you read every year somebody that got stuck the foam can keep you warm. You can keep a baby warm in it. Tear it up, put the baby in the foam, and uh, you can help save their lives. So I just toss that in there. All right. So no more questions, and uh, I'll the foam it. in the seats. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. You guys can uh, you guys can check out uh, the things. When do we here? do the raffle for these things? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a raffle, but each ticket's like five hundred bucks. Yeah, sure. <laughs> work out. If your day job doesn't work out, you will be an excellent salesman for any of those products. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So you guys can, have, so after we have a closing prayer, you guys can come out and check them out. Uh, feel free to have as much soup as you want, uh, cornbread. Um, there's plenty there. We, we brought it for you guys. So. Um, and if anyone has ideas about future classes and wants to teach them, have, have at it, let us know. I do have one tip though. Let's say you're stuck out there somewhere with your car or something. I heard on the radio that if you, uh, like your cell phone's gonna die, most of us have cell phone chargers, but if it's gonna die, hurry and change your message on your cell phone mm -hmm. to say, um, I'm here by this mile marker Da, 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 da. And then your cell phone dies, but when people call your cell phone, it has that message on it. They said if you can send a text out, it's easier because it takes less data to send a text than it does to change your voice. Volunteers for a closing prayer. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Our dear, most kind Heavenly Father, we are so be grateful for this day, and we're going to be grateful for this opportunity, opportunity to meet together and talk about uh, uh, being prepared and to uh, talk about and discuss those things that maybe we all need to look at and uh, participate in, and uh, we may be able to do well at it, but we may be able to help ourselves and also those around us. And we are going to be grateful for the hires and the, the time and effort they put into this. And we love you and we say these things in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks, David. Thanks.